Lionizing by Edgar Allan Poe. All people went upon their ten toes in wild wonderment. Bishop Hall satires. I am, that is to say, I was a great man. But I am neither the author of Junius, nor the man in the mask. For my name is Thomas Smith, and I was born somewhere in the city of Fumfudge. The first action of my life was the taking hold of my nose with both hands. My mother saw this and called me a genius. My father wept for joy and bought me a treatise on nosology. Before I was breached, I had not only mastered the treatise, but had collected into a commonplace book all that is said on the subject by Pliny, Aristotle, Alexander Ross, Minutius Felix, Hermannus Pictorius, Del Rio, Villaret, Bartholinus, and Sir Thomas Brown. I now began to feel my way in the science, and soon came to understand that, provided a man had a nose sufficiently big, he might, by merely following it, arrive at a lionship. But my attention was not confined to theories alone. Every morning I took a drum or two and gave my proboscis a couple of pulls. When I came of age, my father sent for me to his study. My son, said he, what is the chief end of your existence? Father, I said, it is the study of no sology. And what, Thomas, he continued, is no sology? Sir, I replied, it is the science of noses. And can you tell me, he asked, what is the meaning of a nose? A nose, my father, said I, has been variously defined by about a thousand different authors. It is now noon or thereabouts. We shall therefore have time enough to get through with them all by midnight. To commence, the nose, according to Bartholinus, is that protuberance, that bump, that excrescence, that, that will do, Thomas, said my father. I am positively thunderstruck at the extent of your information. I am, upon my soul. Come here, and he took me by the arm. Your education may be considered as finished, and it is high time you should scuffle for yourself. So. So, so here he kicked me downstairs and out of the door. So get out of my house, and God bless you. As I felt within me the divine afflatus, I considered this accident rather fortunate than otherwise, and determined to follow my nose. So I gave it a pull or two, and wrote a pamphlet on nosology. All fun fudge was in an uproar. Wonderful genius, said the quarterly, superb physiologist, said the new monthly, fine writer, said the Edinburgh, great man, said Blackwood, who can he be, said Mrs. Basblue, what can he be, said Big Miss Basblue, where can he be, said Little Miss Basblue, but I paid them no manner of attention and walked into the shop of an artist. The Duchess of Bless Me Soul was sitting for her portrait. The Marchioness of So and So was holding the Duchess's poodle. The Earl of This and That was flirting with her salts, and His Royal Highness of Touchmanot was standing behind her chair. I merely walked towards the artist and held up my proboscis. Oh, beautiful! sighed the Duchess of Bless Me Soul. Oh, pretty, lisped the motionness of so and so. Horrible, groaned the Earl of this and that. Abominable, growled His Highness of Touch Manot. What will you take for it? said the artist. A thousand pounds, said I, sitting down. A thousand pounds, he inquired, turning the nose to the light. Precisely, said I. Beautiful, said he, looking at the nose. A thousand pounds, said I, twisting it to one side. 
admirable, said he. A thousand pounds, said I. You shall have them, said he. What a piece of virtue. So he paid me the money and made a sketch of my nose. I took rooms in German Street, sent His Majesty the 99th edition of the Nosology with a portrait of the author, and His Royal Highness of Touchmanot invited me to dinner. We were all lions and re-churches. There was a Grand Turk from Stambul. He said that the angels were horses, cocks, and bulls, that somebody in the sixth heaven had 70,000 heads and 70,000 tongues, and that the earth was held up by a sky blue cow with 400 horns. There was Sir Positive Paradox. He said that all fools were philosophers, and all philosophers were fools. There was a writer on ethics. He talked of fire, unity, and atoms, bipot, and pre-existent soul, affinity and discord, primitive intelligence and homo emeria. There was the Oligos theology. He talked of Eusebius and Arianus, heresy and the Council of Nice, consubstantialism, homusios, and homoeoisios. There was fricassee from the Rocca di Concoli. He mentioned Latou, Mockbrennan and Moreschino, Muritan of Red Tongue, and cauliflowers with velute sauce, Vila la Saint Mean Halt, Marinade la Saint Florentin, and orange jellies and mosaics. There was Signor Tintontintino from Florence. He spoke of Samabu, Opino, Copaccio, and Augustino, the gloom of Caravaggio, the amenity of Albano, the golden glories of Titian, the froze of Rubens, and the waggeries of Janstein. There was the great geologist Feldspar. He talked of hornblende mica slate, quartz, schist, shawl, and pudding stone. There was the president of the Fum Fudge University. He said that the moon was called Ben in Thrace, Bubastis in Egypt, Dian in Rome, and Otomis in Greece. There was Delphinus Polyglot. He told us what had become of the 83 lost tragedies of Scylus, of the 54 rations of Isis, of the 391 speeches of Lysias, of the 180 treatises of Theophrastus, of the 8th book of the conic sections of Apollonius, of Pindar's hymns and dithyrambics, and the 5 and 40 tragedies of Homer Jr. There was a modern Platonist, he quoted Porphyry, Iamblichus, Plotinus, Proclus, Hierocles, Mamamus Tyrius, and Syrianus. There was a human perfectibility man. He quoted Turgot, Price, Priestley, Condorcet, D. Stale, and the ambitious student in rather ill health. There was myself. I talked of Pictorius, Del Rio, Alexander Ross, Minucius Felix, Bartholinus, Sir Thors, Brown, and the science of noses. Marvelous clever man, said His Highness. Superb, said the guests, and the next morning her grace of bless me soul paid me a visit. Will you go to Ormax, pretty creature, she said. Certainly, said I nose and all. She asked. Positively, I replied. Here then is a card, she said. Shall I say you will be there? Dear Duchess, with all my heart. Sure, no, but with all your nose. Every bit of it, my life, said I. So I gave it a pull or two and found myself at all max. The rooms were crowded to suffocation. He is coming, said somebody on the staircase. He is coming, said somebody farther up. He is coming, said somebody farther still. He is come, said the Duchess. He is come, the little love. And she caught me by both hands 
and looked me in the nose. Ah, Jolie, said Mademoiselle Pozzo. Dios guarda, said Don Stiletto. Diavolo, said Count Capricornuto. Tuzan Teufel, said Baron Blued enough. Tweedledee, Tweedledee, Tweedledum, said the orchestra. Ah, Jolie, Dios guarda, Diavolo, and Tuzan Teufel, repeated Mademoiselle Pozzol, Don Stiletto, Count Capricornuto, and Baron Blued enough. It was too bad, it was not to be born. I grew angry. Sir, said I to the Baron, you are a baboon. Sir, replied he after a pause, Donna and Blitzen. This was sufficient. The next morning I shot off his nose at six o'clock and then called upon my friends. Beat, said the first. Fool, said the second. Ninny, said the third. Dolt, said the fourth. Noodle, said the fifth. Ass, said the sixth. Be off, said the seventh. At all this I felt mortified and called upon my father. Father, I said, what is the chief end of my existence? My son, he replied, it is still the study of nosology. But in hitting the baron's nose, you have overshot your mark. You have a fine nose, it is true, but then blued enough has none. You are DD, and he has become the lion of the day. In Fum Fudge, great is a lion with a proboscis, but greater by far is a lion with no proboscis at all. <laughs>